from the BG Podcast Network Studios, brought to you by Chattahoochee Tech, this is your Paulding County News Podcast, bringing our stories to life with news, events, and what we're talking about in Paulding County. Like, follow, and subscribe to hear the latest news from the Paulding County News Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. For you, about you, from you. Call us now to get in on the conversation at 404-997-8655. That's 404-997-8655 or info at bgadgroup.com. And here's what you're talking about. Welcome to your Paulding County News Podcast. I'm Melissa Carter, along with Doug Harding. Holiday travel is here, and if you are one of the lucky ones flying this season, you better take a book to the airport. Plus, what is happening to our food? You won't believe why some British supermarkets are recalling certain items because of what was found in their containers. But first, Governor Brian Kemp has announced a one-time $1,000 retention pay supplement for over 300,000 state employees, educators, and school support staff. Speaking at the Georgia State Capitol earlier this week, Governor Kemp emphasized the dedication shown by these individuals during the pandemic. The $330 million payment will benefit around 112,000 full-time state employees and 196,000 educators and staff. The supplement is expected in employees last December paycheck. Additionally, Governor Kemp announced a $100 million addition to enhance school security, providing $45,000 to every public school in the state. While these bonuses aim to retain educators, recent data from the Georgia Department of Education reveals a drop in statewide teacher retention for the past two years. This from Fox 5. Brace yourself for the holiday travel rush as airline passenger volumes soar this week. Today and Thursday, over 75,000 and 84,000, respectively, will snake through Hartsfield Jackson Airport. This Friday is anticipated to be the busiest day of the Christmas holiday with nearly 90,000 people expected at the airport security checkpoints. So plan accordingly. On busy days between 6 to 9 a.m. and 3 to 6 p.m., allow extra time for highway travel traffic, airport congestion, and parking. Aim to arrive at the terminal at least two and a half hours before departure. While Christmas Eve and Christmas Day will ease up, be prepared for bustling travel days ahead. Nationally, the TSA plans to screen 2.5 million passengers on peak days, including December 21st, 29th, and January 1st. This from the AJC. Now, Doug, I've already done my holiday travel, and you are about to do your holiday travel. So, are you going to be at the airport? Are you going <laughs> to... You gonna be at the airport? I'm gonna be there on Saturday, <laughs> and I'm planning accordingly. Doug is making a special appearance at Hartsfield Jackson, so if you're there with him, go over and say hi and hug him. Is <laughs> everybody, everybody's gonna need a hug this weekend? <laughs> Well, speaking of the holidays, if the latest Apple watches are on your list, you better act fast because Apple is set to suspend sales of the Series 9 and Ultra 2 versions in the U.S. this week due to an international patent dispute. The White House has a narrow window to intervene before the Thursday online halt and Sunday in-store suspension. The dispute, triggered by that blood oxygen feature, follows an International Trade Commission decision. Apple vows to take swift action if the ban remains, promising to take all measures to resume sales. The Apple Watch SE will still be available, but if you're a last-minute Christmas shopper, just just know that that is going to take place. That's right. This from the AJC. Now coming up, don't eat that, says England. Why shoppers across the pond are having to throw away some holiday items. We'll get to that, but now let's check the weather for Paulding County. Here's your weather report brought to you by Angie Chavez Realty. It's going to be partly sunny and start warming up until Saturday. We're going to have a high today of 52 and a low of 26. Burr and Thursday high of 60 and with a low of 29 as well. Friday's high is 60 with a non-freezing low of 41. And Saturday, 61 is the high and 46 is the low. Not too bad. I know. We've talked about how we're kind of tired of these cold nights, so at least Saturday night won't be as cold. 98.7 Chat Tech, where 98.7% of our students earn a career. What we did at Chattahoochee Tech mainly focused on the more environmental aspect of that. Soil sampling, stream assessments, land assessments, 
And then also it's the geographic interface with that as well. The majority of our students are on the traditional side, but we do have a pretty big percentage. I'd say, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, around 30% of the students are non-traditional who do come back, who've been working in the field for years and want to get a degree in engineering. So many of the instructors that work here are so passionate about what they teach because they come from that field. And, you know, the first week is, hey, how you doing? And the next week is, let's grab this gear and go out and shoot video and then put it together. <laughs> let's work on figuring out how to be storytellers. Visit ChattahoocheeTech.edu, where 98.7% of our students earn a career. We're back with more of your Paulding County News podcast. From the WSB's Facebook page, your arrest report, Ruby Frank. A mother of six who ran a once popular YouTube channel focused on parenting pleaded guilty this week to child abuse charges. I never saw her channel. It was called Eight Passengers, but it was very popular. And again, she was giving parental advice and apparently she's been torturing her children. She was arrested and charged with child abuse after one of her children escaped through the window of a home and asked a neighbor for help. Ashley Nicole said, a distorted sense of morality? Child, please. She hurt those children because she wanted to. She got some sick pleasure out of it, and so did her counselor. You should never be allowed a plea bargain on crimes against children. Sandra Thompson replied, influencer or not, she's a mom, and she should know right from wrong with her kids. We all make mistakes, but this is pure abuse, and she knew it. I'm sure VF Suter offered blame someone else game. She deserves every bad thing that's about to happen to her. I mean, right. And just they've taken the YouTube channel down, obviously. But now, boy, if you watched it and understood what those kids were going through, I mean, just how awful, how awful that she was touting herself as this great mentor to mothers. From the 11 Life Facebook page, safety concerns led to a spectator ban at the upcoming Griffin High versus Spalding High basketball games on January 20th and February 3rd. Only essential personnel will be allowed at these games, and JV and ninth grade games are rescheduled or canceled. The decision follows past incidences, including a fatal shooting after a football match between the same two high schools. Mm. Some parents suggest safety plans and earlier game times, while others argue the streaming service, which they have for these games at $11.99 a month, should be absolutely free. Because that's the alternative. Since you can't go to the game, you can watch it on the streaming service. Well, Donna Holt said, act like y'all have some common sense. Teach your children how to act. Raise them right from birth. Vada Binky responded, at least allow the parents to attend. It's a shame a few bad apples have to ruin this game for all. I think the parents were the problem in the first place. And then Bobby Beck said, it's junior high in high school. I think the district should just cancel the program altogether if this is how the adults and their children are going to act about a sport, again, that's not even professional. Well, you know, for years and years and years, parents have been crazy sports parents, but I think it's been leveled up since everybody and their mother has a gun now. Right. Well, and I am a mother of a son who plays sports, and I got to tell you, it's... It depends on the sport, too, but I'm amazed at how personal these parents take these competitions to the embarrassment of those children. Mm hmm. I've seen it, too. We've had several food recall notices here in the U.S. that Doug and I have told you about, mainly due to salmonella issues, but there's a recall notice in the U.K. And it's been issued for baked beans sold at major supermarkets there. Why? (laughs) Small rubber balls. Small rubber balls. Roughly 2.5 centimeters in diameter have been found in the baked beans containers. Just little balls. This follows a recent incident where a British supermarket had to recall Christmas stuffing due to potential moth contamination. This from Sky News. Now, I'm not criticizing them with their food. I'm just saying that food industry somehow is a mess. Yeah, Nigel, why are my baked beans so chewy? (laughs) What's happening in Paulding County? We've got you covered. Here's some events for you now through Friday. Holiday Toy Drive at DLB Discount Resale on Merchants Drive in Dallas. Today from 4 to 10 p.m., Wine Down Wednesday at Vintage Wine Bar in Dallas. And finally, Saturday at 7 p.m., Karaoke Night at Buffalo's Cafe in Hiram. And I'm hoping it's all Christmas music because it's the same two people singing repeatedly. (laughs) Exactly, because nobody else wants to get up there. 
<laughs> Rock and a... And yeah, I don't do karaoke, and there's a reason for it. I'm not going to continue it. Coming up, a recent report suggests that technical colleges are seeing a rise in enrollment because there's more jobs available in those areas. Is it true? We're going to speak with Missy Kuzak, who's Vice President of Student Affairs at Chattahoochee Technical College, to see what she's seen. Angie Chavez is an experienced real estate agent serving Paulding, Cobb, and other counties in Georgia for 24 years. She is dedicated to serving her clients and has extensive knowledge of the West Georgia real estate market. Angie has won numerous awards for her sales production and is a million-dollar member of the National Board of Realtors. She specializes in new home construction and is an accredited buyer agent. Angie is also passionate about giving back and supporting military, veterans, teachers, and public servants. Whether buying or selling, Angie Chavez with Atlanta Communities is the right choice. Call her today at 404-401-0739 or visit her website at angiechavez.atlcommunities.com. Hey, unlike others, Angie will call you back if you don't reach her the first time. That's 404-401-0739. When it comes to solving complex engineering challenges, there's only one name you need to know, Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Our team of experts has years of experience and uses the latest technology to provide innovative solutions for all your home needs. From foundation repair to waterproofing and drainage solutions, we've got you covered. We work with both residential and commercial clients, and we're committed to providing excellent customer service every step of the way. And with our state-of-the-art equipment and top quality materials, you can be confident that your project will be completed to the highest standard. So why settle for less when you can have the best? Call Engineered Solutions of Georgia today to schedule your free consultation and see how we can help you tackle any engineering challenge. Engineered Solutions of Georgia. We guarantee a state for dry foundation. Residential and commercial. Hey, we do it all. Dial 678 ESOG now. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Paulding County News Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All of our feature interview pieces here on the Paulding County News Podcast are presented by Credit Union of Georgia. Let's meet some of the interesting people in our neighborhood. Missy Kuzak is here with us, Vice President of Student Affairs at Chattahoochee Tech. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, let me address first that nobody will get confused because Missy and Melissa, we have the same name, but she uses Missy. And I told her off air, I'm like, in my small town, we had, I think, seven Melissas I went to school with. And every one of them was a Missy. And I <laughs> wanted to be different. I wanted to be a rebel. So I used Melissa. Not going to confuse us, right? No, no. <laughs> but we still have the greatest names that have ever Absolutely. been given to Absolutely. any daughters. That's right. <laughs> anyway, the reason I wanted Missy to come on the podcast with us is because I had seen an AJC article. It's called Enrollment Jumps at Georgia Technical Colleges Driven by High Demand Jobs. AI is not going to fix your car completely. AI is not going to fix your plumbing or your electrical. Talk a little bit about that. And do you at Chattahoochee Tech see an uptick in enrollment? And and what are the students interested in now? We were really lucky this fall, not just luck. I mean, a lot of it's hard work too, but to have a 9% enrollment increase from this fall to last fall. So we're right where we were pre-COVID. Um, and community colleges took a huge community and technical colleges, because Georgia does not have a true community college system, we kind of fit that bill as well. But they took a huge hit during COVID because so many of our students, college is a luxury. When things were tight during COVID, college had to be the thing that was was eliminated from their budgets, which I totally understand. And so we're seeing that swing of enrollment back in that way. But also, I think There is more concern overall over student debt. There's so much talk about student debt, and of course it is out of control and um, talked about across groups all the time. And so I think people are really concerned about that, the cost of living, inflation, all those things. People are trying to make really great money conscious decisions. We're seeing some students because of that, as a result of that. When the economy is really great, when folks are able to find jobs, a lot of times historically, our enrollment has decreased because people are out in the workforce working. But right now, I think we're seeing people who are like, okay, how can I get training for the least amount of money and the least amount of time and then be able to go out and not just have a job, but have a career and be able to support my family? 
be able to make a good living, a really good living. Many of our students do really well, and I would compare what they make to what students who have bachelor's degrees. We can talk about that, too, because I think that's something to point out. There is always the reputation. I think you and I fell into it. Uh, Four-year colleges that's more prestigious, that gives you a better reputation, that gives you a better livelihood. But you just pointed out that's not the case anymore. There's so many four-year college students who were, (laughs) I mean, well into their lives, almost to middle age, still paying off the debt from college. So the idea is, oh, I pay this for college and I will get reimbursed by my job and it will all be taken care of. But like you said, it's almost as if, and this is Melissa talking, okay, this is not any study or anything, but it's almost as if these universities are taking advantage of the idea that they are prestigious and this charging you for that, but yet, what's the payoff? If, I, if I'm still looking for a job and still not working in my profession in my 30s or 40s, then what's wrong here? I hate to quote numbers because as soon as I say, well, you're going to make this much, then there's somebody who's like, well, no, right. you know, there, there's always going to be those outliers. But I think what you have to take into account is exactly what you were saying is, what did I pay for this training versus what am I now making once I leave? Many of our students in our health science professions make excellent livings. Many of them are going to start above 40 and some of them are going to start above 60. And I mean, that's fantastic for what really is going to take them in our health science areas. It's going to take them a little bit more than two years to finish their associate degree because they're extremely competitive. But even in some of our other areas, which when they think about technical colleges, they think about kind of their daddy's trade school. And it's not the same anymore. Our automotive students, for example, when we take folks through the automotive lab for them to look at it, they're like, it's so clean in here. And I'm like, well, of course it is. How does your car work now? It works with a computer. It's not all grease and, you know, like people have these wrong stereotypes. So our automotive students, for example, that's an area that desperately needs employees. Our diesel mechanic students, we can't keep them enrolled in the classes because they're being poached by businesses who need the employees. Um, Our heating and air conditioning students do fantastically. Georgia, you got to have air conditioning. You got to have when the winter comes. Those students the same way. Our welding students, our industrial maintenance. When I first started working here, I would have been like, I don't know what an industrial maintenance person does. So that's the person who goes into one of these huge manufacturing facilities and make sure that all of the elements inside that plant and that business are working. All right. Well, before we let you go, let me, I have one more question, but first let's talk about how people can learn more about Chat Tech. The best thing is going to be to visit our website, chattahoocheetech.edu. So it's Chattahoochee spelled out and then tech is T-E-C-H dot E-D-U. All the information that a student could ever need is probably two or three clicks away from that homepage. So everything from admissions applications, information, information about tours, upcoming events, as well as financial aid, full list of all of our programs and majors, start dates, All the information is there. And also there's contact information for each of those departments should someone want to reach out to an individual department. Fantastic. All right. My last question is I'm looking out for my fellow older adults who may be pivoting careers. Do you have people who are full grown adults who've already had a career, maybe already had their families and looking to try something new or maybe something that they wanted to try and they weren't able to do it before? Absolutely. So we always have students who felt called to do a certain profession and they ignored it for whatever reason. Nursing is a big one in that area. They felt called to do become a nurse and they didn't. And so they'll come back. Many of our students who are in those health science majors already have bachelor's degrees. They may have already worked or perhaps they earned a bachelor's degree in something that made it hard for them to find a job. And so now they're returning. There is financial aid available even for older students. I think sometimes people assume that's not the case. Georgia has a great financial aid package for its residents, so there are options for older adults. And I know we're not this old, but once we get to the point where we're considered a senior, they can take courses tuition-free. And they still have to pay the mandatory fees, but there's even that option for folks who are 62, and maybe they've lived a whole life, and now Mm -hmm. they just want to try something new. I love it. I I appreciate you saying that we're not there yet, but that, that senior exit on my interstate is closer than it ever has been. So it's a privilege to get there. It's a privilege, Missy. Well, you Missy, choice. <laughs> exactly. Missy Kuzak, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on the efforts you're making over at Chat Tech. Thank you so much for having me. I love technology as much as anybody, but when banks replace people with machines, I had to draw a line. 
I've been with the same bank for 20 plus years, and as cool as technology is, I believe the relationship you have with your bank is an important one. My wife used to bake cookies for the people who worked at our bank, and they were our friends. But in the last couple of years, they were all replaced by video tellers. Recently, I sold a vehicle and was paid in cash. I went to deposit it and was told my now former bank no longer accepts cash. Okay. That was it for me. I joined Credit Union of Georgia, a homegrown, not-for-profit cooperative that still offers personalized customer service, a network of more than 30,000 ATMs, and convenient locations. Innovation is great, but trust and relationships still matter, particularly where it comes to your finances. Make the switch today. Get more info at cuofga.org. Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. We're back with more of your Paulding County News podcast. As Christmas approaches, there's a potential holiday miracle for one or more lottery players. Monday night's Powerball drawing left the grand prize untouched, soaring to a staggering $572 million for today's draw. Two options for the winner. You get an annuity with 29 annual payments or the lump sum option. And if you choose that second option, the cash value before taxes could be approximately $286.7 million just in time for Christmas. This from WSB. You know what? I've never heard of anybody taking the annuity on it. It's always the lump sum. It's always the lump sum. And then there's plenty of times where the lottery people, I've seen, I've heard stories where people, lottery winners run out of their money. Surely you wouldn't run out of $200 million, but you never know. Well, I'll take it. Give me, give me the chance to try, Doug. Give me the chance to try. Well, go look at uh, professional athletes, and you'll you'll get uh, some other oh, other stories there. Right. And here's more from sports. This is from the Athens Banner Herald and the Paulding Sports Chronicle. Carson Beck he has decided to stay as the UGA quarterback for another year, while linebacker Smell Mondin has also decided to return for another year in Athens. And we told you about Luke Brand. He won the Country Runner of the Year for the boys in Paulding County. And congrats to Addie Bolivar, who received the County Runner of the Year for the girls' side. I'm telling you, every time I see these runners, that's one sport I never did. <laughs> I just for some reason, I'm, oh, I wish I had. I wish I had that ability. Good for you for being able to run. That's not me. Chick-fil-A fans know they are closed on Sundays. A new bill, though, introduced in New York aims to require food services at transportation facilities and rest areas along Interstate 90 to remain open seven days a week, which impacts Chick-fil-A locations there. The bill argues that leaving retail spaces unused on Sundays inconveniences travelers. So far, there's no comment from Chick-fil-A. Are they going to break that precedent for New York? This from Atlanta's News First. I'd be totally fine with that. I think most people would. I know there's, you know, sacred reasons why they don't do it, but I'm curious which is going to prevail for them if there's enough people um, that give them pressure to stay open on Sundays. We'll see. Now I'm going to go have a chicken sandwich. Thank you, chicken. <laughs> and we'll have final thoughts after this. Whether you're new to church, have been a Christian for many years, or looking for a fresh start, you're welcome at New Season Church. New Season is a place where people can believe in God, belong to a family of believers, and become fully devoted followers. We exist so that people far from God may experience life in Christ and become fully engaged followers. Join us for one of our two Sunday services, 9 or 11 a.m. Hi, this is Pastor Steve Flockart. Whether you're new to the Paulding community or have been here since the day you were born, New Season Church is a place where all are welcome. From our exciting children and student ministries to our engaging Bible studies and small groups and events, I promise New Season Church has a place for you. New Season Church, just off Highway 278 at 4457 Atlanta Highway in Hiram. We exist so that people far from God may experience life in Christ and become fully engaged followers. New Season looks forward to seeing your entire family this Sunday and feel free to check us out online at newseason.cc. We believe what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. We look forward to seeing you Sunday at 9 or 11 a.m. at New Season Church in Hiram. Thanks for listening to today's Paulding County News Podcast. Follow and subscribe to hear the latest news from the Paulding County News Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. 
for you, about you, and from you. Get involved in the conversation at 404-997-8655 or info at bgadgroup.com. Did you know over 50% of Americans listen to podcasts weekly? Make sure you join us for our next episode and be sure to share this podcast on social media with your friends and family. Add us to your Alexa flash briefing or your Google home briefing and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group. All rights reserved. This podcast aggregate content from other sources for informational purposes and is in no way trying to infringe on the copyrights or businesses of any other entities. All content posted up on the site is used under the Fair Use Copyright Law 107. All audio, media, and articles are copyrighted to the original owners. All audio on this podcast are embedded from YouTube.com and are owned by the respective copyright owners. No audio information are copyrighted or stored on our servers. The court ruled that linking or embedding copyrighted videos is not copyright infringement, even if the source video was uploaded without permission. However, we will gladly remove any audio clip upon valid request from respective copyright owners. Any owners also have the option to disable embedding his YouTube videos on other websites. News and press articles are owned by the respective copyright owners. Where possible, the appropriate accreditation or source of the article is given on the same page. The audio video files on this site are for listening purposes only. Downloading of these files to one's computer is strictly prohibited. They are owned by the respective copyright owners. If it is in the organization's belief that the usage or specific content used on our site containing copyrighted knowledge conflicts with authorized use and or does not comply with fair use as described in the context, contact us through our contact page and we will remove the offending content immediately. Thanks for listening to the Paulding County News Podcast.